What's good with the YouTube? This is your boy Rojo, and this is the Rojo Room. And today what I wanted to discuss was the first time I seen somebody get hit, man. And uh, I'll tell you what real quick, a little a little backstory before I say what it was, man. In Texas, man, I've discussed this before. When you're 17, you go to the county jail, man. My door gets kicked in. I, I did some weird things to a to a cop car <laughs> and they were looking for me for it right so uh my door gets kicked in they wait you know i did it when i was 16 but they waited because i'd already been to the texas youth commission and they figured uh tyc didn't make this dude change his life at all let's send him to the county so they kick in my door i, I turned 17 like a few days maybe a week beforehand and uh they take me to the county jail right so in this county jail, this is a place called Fort Bend County. It's in Richmond, Texas. It's a, you know, basically a, a suburb of Houston. It's its own city, but it's Houston. You know what I mean? In this jail, they have two separate sides. One of them has bars similar to, you know, Quentin or Folsom or, you know, places like that. And one of them has dorms. Well, the first place I go is the high control. You know what I mean? It's because uh, I set a cop car on fire make a long story short well uh since they tried to charge me with arson and whatnot i was considered a violent offender well i'm in these cells and what it is it's like a big day room there's bars that run all the way down like a hallway to the end they catch into some other bars and then there's like uh maybe eight or ten cells right so uh, I'm in this cell, and down there, there there wasn't no segregated housing, none of that kind of stuff. My cellie was this black crip. He was from L.A., some like swamp crip or something like that. I'm not sure the exact name of his head, but he was cool. He went by the name K-9. He was cool as shit. You know, he's a little bit older. He's probably 22, 23. And he kind of taught me the ropes for, you know, surviving in the county, essentially. There was a white dude. He was in there fighting a death penalty case. His name was Spencer Corey Goodman, and he had killed a lady and uh, actually mobbed around with her inside of the vehicle for a couple days, committing crimes and stuff all the way to like Colorado or something like that. And the lady happened to be related to some famous people. Uh, there's a classic rock band called ZZ Top three white dudes with long ass beards and shit anyway he gets busted somehow and he's in there fighting it you know what i mean and uh nobody's tripping on him because of his crimes or nothing so you know it's just a little different vibe down there you know he was right there in general population you know i don't really i don't really understand adult politics down there like i know the texas youth commission but all i've done is maybe you know six six months in their county jail as an adult but uh so what had happened is uh, another white dude came in, which was rare. You know what I mean? There was probably only, man, maybe 10 white dudes in the whole jail. The rest were either, it was, it was predominantly black folks and there was a handful of, of Mexicans, right? And, uh, the Texas syndicate actually had a real strong presence in that jail, man. I remember the first time meeting a couple of those guys, you know, I see their, their tattoos on their forearm T with the snake through it and shit. And uh, they were they were they were pretty much running that jail, bro. I mean, even though they were small in numbers, obviously they're they're not to be. They were really really strong back in the early '90s, man. But uh, anyway, another white dude comes in, and uh, they got him in the day room. All the cells were full, so they'll have like four little, you know, cots on the day room floor and whatnot. Well, he had the appearance of one of those type of weird dudes. You know what I'm saying? So. That white boy, Spencer Goodman, who was fighting the, the capital murder beef, took an immediate dislike to him. Well, fast forward a week or so, the, the new white dude, I don't even remember his name, little chubby, weird, you know, ice cream truck looking kind of dude, goes to court. And we're in there watching TV, and uh, his court case comes on the TV. Man accused of multiple counts. You know, of those those weird stuff. The, the weird stuff, you know what I mean? You know, everybody kind of just looks at him and doesn't really say nothing. You know, none of us have been to the pen. We were younger, you know what I mean? We didn't really know what to do. But uh, 
you know, 30, 30, 40 minutes goes by. And uh, the the white dude, the, the death penalty guy gets at us. He's like, hey, I'm going to take care of this dude. Like, we were just thinking he was going to beat him up and whatnot. And that'd be that. But what had happened is, I don't remember what time they lock you down. But uh, the day room stays open. So the day room can kind of walk down the corridor in front of the cells, you know, just like bars, just like you would on a tier, essentially. So uh, that dude Goodman's in the fourth cell and me and canine are in the third. And I don't remember who Goodman's cell he was. It was a it, it was a it was a Latino. I don't I don't remember. I can't really remember his name or nothing at all. But what had happened was he called he called the, the guy that had those weird charges he's like hey hey come here man bring me some hot water or whatnot so dude brings him some hot water whatever and he's like hey let me ask you something dude came closer to the bars and uh man we just happened to me and me and canine were both at the front of the cells because we were talking to the neighbor on the other side like in cell two and uh he called him to the bars and uh that dude goodman reached out and grabbed a hold of his shirt and just started plowing his face with like a man it looked just like an ice pick but obviously it wasn't an ice pick but it was a real thin real sturdy strong pointy object and he hit that dude in the face a good dozen dozen or more times dude screaming um eyeball gone and just devastated he let him go and dude went screaming and kicking on the door and uh like neck and face were just lit up bro it was insane but uh you know, the dude was telling but i mean dude didn't it didn't matter because not only is the dude fighting the death penalty he did get convicted he got the death penalty and you know how texas is he got executed a few years later so i mean he wasn't tripping on handling that business and i, I found it kind of weird you know, uh, later on in life that, man, you got some pretty weird charges too. I mean, it's not, it's not those kind of charges, but dude, you, you're, you're mobbing around with somebody in the trunk, bro. That's, I don't know. That's kind of weird to me too, but is where do you draw the line? You know, I mean, I don't know how that would play out necessarily in Cali. You know, if he just, if he just did the, the 211 and the 187, that's one thing, but to mob around, for a few days that that could probably be looked at as kind of weird you know what i mean but the dude was about that action bro that was the first thing i ever seen and i was like and it's like literally man four feet from me you know what i mean i couldn't see the actual the actual pokes because he had grabbed him and pulled him right into the bars and just lit him up you know what i mean so i couldn't see that but i could see him like kicking and trying to pull back and screaming and he used the restroom on himself and all kinds of stuff, man. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty interesting, man. That was the first one I had ever seen, you know, kind of go down and, uh, it, it was treacherous and they didn't even do none of the white boy. They, they, they came in and they're like, you know, you're getting rid up, right? <laughs> you know, and it's like, man, he don't care, bro. You know what I mean? But I mean, the, they, the guards didn't want no problems with that dude. I was surprised he was in regular housing. You know what I mean? With, you know, that kind of a charge. But, hey, that's their jail. Different time. Different different geographical location, for sure. Things are a lot different here than in California. But, uh, anyway, yeah, that's just the story. The first one I ever seen go down. And it was a good one. There, there was, Probably both eyes were gone. And, yeah, that was that. Anyway, this is Rojo. This is the Rojo Room. Y'all have a good day.